everyone what's up welcome to or welcome back to my channel my name is Elise thanks for stopping in it's great to see you guys as you can tell by the title of today's video I am unhauling books I've seen a lot of people do this kind of video and I absolutely love watching them some of these are old books some of these are newer books today we will be unhauling 19 books that's space for 19 new books for me to purchase that's how that works right <laughs> I get rid of 19 so I can buy 19 more. I'm just gonna get into it and start and tell you my reason for why. Let's get started. This one might be controversial, but uh, I have to do it. If you watched my 24 hour reading challenge, Colleen Hoover only edition, I had a lot of really mixed feelings about this book. The writing style was great. There were some really beautiful moments. However, the plot just was not for me. This is a book about friends with benefits but the girl Tate decides that she really likes Miles and really wants more from him. So whenever she starts asking for more, he's like, no, we agreed to not do that. She gets upset and then like tries again and again and again and again. And then gets upset when he like pulls back in a way. Not for me. The next book is Count Your Lucky Stars by Alexandria Belafleur. I really enjoyed the premise of this. I love that it's a queer romance. However, I was not a huge fan of the writing style. I did go and look at the other books in this series because I thought, oh, this is technically the third book, even though they're standalones. Maybe it just seemed a little off to me because it was the third. I tried reading the first chapters and I just couldn't get into it. The cover is gorgeous and I do remember really enjoying the spice in this book. I wish the best for Alexandria Bellaflor, but I'm gonna have to let this go. Then we have Water for Elephants by Sarah Green. I read this in Korea, left it in Korea, and then I saw this on sale maybe at a thrift store and decided to pick it up again. I do remember when I read this book, there's this scene where he's on the train for the circus and he gets really drunk. And the way that Sarah wrote that scene, I was feeling like woozy and drunk myself and I was like holy crap she did such a great job of capturing that really impressed by her writing I enjoyed it when I read it but I'm not gonna read it again mm. this one's hard for me the beautiful ones this is a classic example of buying books for the beautiful covers oh can you hear the chickens outside Oh my gosh. I bought this for the cover. I bought this when I first got back from South Korea and I was going absolutely crazy because now I can actually buy physical books. I have tried reading the first few pages and I just can't. I just can't. I'm also confused at myself because this is by Silvia Moreno Garcia and she is the same author who wrote Mexican Gothic. Mexican Gothic wasn't for me. I don't know if it was the genre or the writing style or what, but it was not for me. So I'm kind of confused why I even picked this book up in the first place. So I'll probably be reselling this one. Chickies, really, do you have to do this right here, right now? Ladies, must you do this right now? Don't get sassy on me. Okay, my next book that I'm also kind of sad about is Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. I really enjoy Christina Lauren's books, but this one didn't hit for me. It was just so chaotic. Towards the ending, I finally accepted how chaotic it was, and then I started enjoying it more, but it was just a lot. And it also had floating third-person narrator. That's just not my personal favorite. Nothing against people who use it, but I personally am not a huge fan of it. It was just a combination of things that weren't for me. Still love CeeLo 
The next book we have is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. I actually just read this in my Reading Greek Mythology books for a week, but my boyfriend actually got me this book for Christmas in paperback form, and one, I prefer paperback, and two, for some reason, I thought that I didn't have this book already. I thought this was called something else, so that was my fault, but I just, I don't need two versions of it. This one has all of my annotations, and it's a paperback, which I prefer, so... Next we have Flow. This book, I've heard really great things about it. I mean, it has really great reviews too, but I've tried reading it a few times and I just end up falling asleep. So I think that for me, this might end up being a better book for me to listen to. Then we have The Ice Queen by Alice Hoffman. I've had this book for a really long time. I thought I would read this and I just, I have not gotten to it and I just don't think that I'm going to if I'm being quite honest. I don't know, maybe I should just keep it just for decoration or something, but it's, it's coming off my main shelves. Then we have Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. I really enjoyed this book. I loved the short chapters. I loved how just like blunt these two were with each other. I kind of liked how the ending wasn't exactly how you preferred. Like at the time when I read it, I was kind of like upset, but then the more I thought about it, the more I appreciated the ending. However, I just don't think I'm going to read this again. And if I owned it, I would probably prefer paperback. It is what it is. A potentially controversial one. These three by Cassandra Clare. We have City of Fallen Angels, City of Glass, and Clockwork Angel. Now, I have an explanation. I found these in paperback. <laughs> I'm a paperback girl. Hardbacks look lovely and beautiful, but they take up so much space, and I am savage, and I like curling my pages back. Not cracking the spine if I can help it, but curling my pages back. So when I found these in paperback for like 99 cents, I was like, yes, so I'll resell these or donate these or something like that. Then we have Down Home Cowboy by Maisie Yates. Now I've read several of the books in this series. I really love the Copper Ridge series that she has. Whenever I'm feeling nostalgic or especially when I was in Korea when I was homesick or I just want a cowboy romance with a little bit of spice, these are great. But for some reason, I'm not loving this one. The main character was just saying and thinking the same things over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I just couldn't. So I'm just going to DNF this and pass it on. Then we have Starfall, which actually looks like a pretty fun novel. However, I just learned that this is the second book in a series. It's pretty beat up. I got it secondhand. I just have a lot of other books that I'm probably going to reach for before I reach for this one. So I'm just going to let it go. And if for some reason it catches my attention again, I'll probably pick up the ebook or something like that. I love knitting and crocheting. I picked this up and I was just so excited to see knitting in a book. I thought that was so cool because you don't see that very often and for a girly who loves knitting you're like yes! Whenever you see your hobby in a book it's so exciting and fun but I've read the first few pages of this quite a few times just trying to garner interest and see if I felt like reading it and I passed it by so many times that I think it's time for it to go. Then we have Fairest, which is a novella in the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I have read two of these books so far and I've really enjoyed them. However, they've both been on Kindle and I just kind of want to keep them on Kindle for the sake of consistency. Then we have The Kite Runner, which I honestly have not read and I should read it. <sighs> I know it has really good lessons to tell and that it's, I don't know if classic is the right word, but it's a piece of literature that I know a lot of us grew up having read, but I don't think I'm going to read this. There's so many other books on my shelves that I want to read more and... If I want to read a book that's going to challenge me, I am going to find what I want to challenge me in that moment. And I haven't been drawn to this. 
I don't know if that makes sense. Hopefully some of you understand. Then we have the Lost Goddess. This honestly gives me like Indiana Jones vibes and that's not really my style of book. I don't know why I picked this up forever ago. I love the cover. It looks really fun, but I just know that I'm not gonna read this. I'm just not. It's been on my shelf for years. It's time for it to go. Then we have The Valley of Amazement by Amy Tan. I have learned that I just am not a huge fan of multi-generational stories. Stories that span multi-generations are usually a lot slower and maybe a little bit more dense and that is not my preferred style of writing or book. I've also had this on my shelves for several years. I've passed it by so many times and it's almost 600 pages. I've also learned that I like shorter books than I used to. <laughs> Can we talk about deckled edges for a second? Unpopular opinion. I, I just don't like deckled edges. Okay, you guys, that is going to be it for my unhauling books video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if there are some books down below that I should give a second chance. Thanks so much for watching. Sending all of you good vibes wherever you are, whenever you are. All the good vibes. All the good vibes. Take them. Just take them. <laughs> okay, everyone. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. That was so satisfying. Oh. I've been thinking about getting rid of those books for so long and just like wavering about them for so long that it feels very satisfying to finally just let them go. <laughs> Can you focus on me and not my gorgeous books? Like I get it. Oh my gosh. Ugly love. Get with the program. Ugh.